What's going on guys? Just want to make a real quick video and show you uh, a couple of minor modifications I've made to my Joe's CNC Evolution router. Uh, this is version 1.0. I've uh, been having some accuracy issues and I uh, basically traced it down to possibly some worn rails, but I think uh, the biggest culprit uh, was maybe just how I had the machine adjusted as well as the gantry carriage itself, uh, meaning these front and rear plates, how they were kind of tied together. And I'll show you, uh, these are some pieces of threaded rod or all thread that we're holding uh, the front and rear sets of bearings, uh, each one had one bearing, you know, so going through this axis here and here, you know, on each corner. And uh, you can see, uh, just looking at them, they're pretty well tweaked, almost like a dog's hind leg. And uh, there's no way that wasn't giving me some kind of trouble. So I uh, took that all apart, and instead of running a single shaft or bolt through both bearings uh, which does by the way make things kind of hard to adjust uh, without any bushings or spacers in between uh, ended up going with individual bolts for each one and what that allowed me to do was independently adjust and square uh, you know and get parallel the front plate and the rear plate you know i had my z slide all the way off so that was out of my way uh, got these both dialed in and rolling well. Uh, and then I went ahead and tied them back together by running a piece of half inch round bar. Uh, just some mild steel round uh, through each plate and locking that in with some quarter inch uh, set screws or grub screws. And believe it or not, this is incredibly strong and sturdy. And uh, there is now zero play you know, left or right, uh, the bearings have good solid contact. And if I don't have my pinion engaged, uh, it's just a real nice smooth roll, uh, much better than what I was able to have uh, as far as adjustment in before. Now, I'm not saying this is the best way. This is just kind of my short term solution for now. Uh, but it was a lot easier to kind of dial in and get together. Uh, you know, than having the single shafts going through two bearings at a time. Now, another alternative, and what I should have done initially uh, was not use this low strength threaded rod, but maybe some grade eight, uh, grade eight hardware, uh, maybe some seven or eight inch long, you know, bolts. Uh, they would have had quite a bit more strength in them. They wouldn't have bent like this. And, uh, you know, in addition to that, uh, it also, be a good idea to get some bushings uh, to the appropriate length, you know, to run in between these rails, you know, figure out what this width is and, uh, you know, what this width in between bearings are, uh, and then get four bushings, uh, you know, and then you can tie it all together like that. Uh, but, you know, that's one way. This is another. And, you know, if I haven't stated it already, this is more or less just a short term solution, anyhow. Uh, because I actually do plan on doing the version 2 upgrade, which involves changing out all this V-rail, uh, which in my case is just angle iron, to some linear guides and bearings. And uh, the reason I didn't do that initially uh, was really just cost. Uh, it was also a little bit of a timing issue as the design really wasn't proved out. Uh, I think when I was starting to buy parts for this, Joe was actually just thinking of or maybe hadn't quite thought of yet uh, how he wanted to implement linear guides into the evolution design. Uh, and now it's been about a year or two, uh, I believe, since uh, that first prototype uh, was kind of put into place. So, you know, it seems like the design has been pretty well proved out. Uh, I've seen a number of guys in the forums uh, making that modification or building it from scratch. And uh, it looks like a much better option so I'll be looking at about $1,000 to maybe $1,200 uh, for the conversion uh, once I get all the parts and pieces together. Uh, linear guides are not cheap. Uh, and the way I'm going to do it, uh, you know, I'm not going to go for the cheapest option, uh, but, you know, try to uh, start off with quality from the get-go. So uh, that's coming down the line. Uh, I've already ordered aluminum. I do have to redo these plates. 
uh, you know, that the bearings or the guides will mount to. Uh, so I've ordered the material to make those out of aluminum. Uh, I'm also going to start ordering the fasteners and spacers and various miscellaneous hardware uh, that's relatively inexpensive uh, just to have that ready. Uh, and then the last piece of the puzzle, you know, maybe I'll order the rails at one point and then the guides at another or, you know, see if I can scrape up a few hundred bucks to get it all at once. Uh, but when that's all in, uh, then I'll make the conversion and this machine should run even smoother than it does now and, uh, you know, be able to dial it in even a little bit better uh, than I am already. So just a few notes on that. Uh, mainly just wanted to show this modification here uh, or at least talk about other options if you're building one. Uh, don't use this low strength threaded rod. Uh, it's garbage. It's not strong enough. You know, use some grade eight uh, hardware or grade five at the minimum, and uh, you know, even get some bushings uh, that are going to ride on the inner race of these bearings. You know, to space those out properly. Uh, make sure your rail spacing is good and uh, everything should adjust and run a lot smoother so that's it guys i uh, just figured i'd throw that out there uh, again initial test after doing all this and setting it up uh you know everything's looking good uh, 